themselves. Madam Deputy Speaker, and it's a particular honour to follow on from th uh, three new maiden speeches, all made by three uh, new female members. Um, I've only made my maiden speech two weeks ago, so I'm now speaking as a very experienced old-timer. Um, what particularly resonated with me was what the um, member of Barnsley East said, um, people matter. And that is very relevant to our debate today as well. Madam Deputy Speaker, man, one month from now, this tragedy, there is no less pain for the victims and their families, no less fear and no less anger for failings of the political system. The disaster at Grenfell Tower has left a huge scar, not just in the local community of Kensington, but across Britain. It has moved people deeply, whether they have local connections or not, and that has been reflected in the generosity shown by public donations. It has also exposed deep divisions and inequalities in our society, which we have ignored for far too long. This disaster should have been avoided. How is it possible that in a very wealthy borough like Kensington and Chelsea, dozens of people can burn to death in their own homes? We now need to find out um, from the public inquiry exactly what happened and what mistakes were made. But reports that unsafe building materials were used, that the need to cast, cut costs was put above tenant safety, and that concerns raised by the residents were repeatedly ignored, paint a picture that go much deeper than this disaster. It goes to the heart of our political system and its failures. Trust between our local communities and the political system has, to be, has been seriously eroded and has to be restored. Trust is a very precious thing which takes a long time to build. It is an essential part of a healthy democracy and a functioning society. It is essential that in the work to restore lives affected by Grenfell Tower, everything possible is done to rebuild this trust. That means genuinely listening to victims, families and the local community, involving residents in the decisions that affect their lives and their future, and it means taking all possible action to put things right. And it must include an urgent increase in social housing provision across our country, this disaster was the result of a long-term failure of successive governments to invest in social housing in both the quality and number of homes. And leaving house building to the private sector has utterly failed. It has led to a housing crisis which has driven vast inequality and pushed ma many families into poverty and homelessness. Until we take radical action, this crisis will continue to spiral out of control. Furthermore, we need widespread reform on the systems and structures. We need an immediate review of the building regulations to ensure they are up-to-date and appropriate and that we cannot wait for the results of the public inquiry. We cannot have a repeat of what happened after the Lacanel House fire when a review of reg regulation was promised but never delivered. This time, lessons must be learned and implemented fast. Given that the fire started in a fridge, there must also be reform on electrical safety. My colleagues in both houses have for a long time been fighting for the introduction of compulsory electrical safety checks in rented homes. The government has so far seen this as an unnecessary regulation. Now it is surely inexcusable not to make this simple change that has the potential to save lives. All residents in Britain, whatever type of housing they live in, have the right to live in homes that are safe, warm and set in well-run, safe, green and clean neighbourhoods. Madam Deputy Speaker, this disaster has exposed huge weaknesses in the housing provision of our country and has undermined people's trust. We all have a responsibility in rebuilding trust between the public and the elected representative, but this government has the power to take the radical steps to fix the system, and they must do that now. Thank you.